2019 is shaping up to be a pretty interesting year for wireless technology with 802.11ax, also known as Wi-Fi 6, making its way to the market here pretty shortly. And companies that are fighting to be the budget Wi-Fi mesh system that you choose for your home. And now TP-Link thinks that they have a shot at the crown. We have previously also reviewed the TP-Link Deco M9 Plus system and gave it a strong recommendation for parents due to the best parental controls we had seen on any system so far. Now it's a great system and we'll be sure to link to that review as well, but needless to say, when TP-Link reached out to us to see if we would be interested in checking out their Deco M4 system, we very happily said yes. When I talk about budget Wi-Fi systems, I'm looking for a system that has great physical features like extra ports for connectivity, but is also aesthetically pleasing. Ugly Wi-Fi tends to get hidden, and if you hide your Wi-Fi, you're probably going to have a pretty terrible connection. I'm also looking for systems that maximize the number of mesh endpoints provided in the box. The more mesh endpoints you get, the better coverage you can spread across your entire house. A great feature set and solid performance are also musts. And finally, and probably the most important category of all, is the cost. It doesn't matter how good your system is, if it costs an arm and a leg, no one's going to buy it. Design-wise, this system features tall, plain, white plastic towers with a decorative grille on top and a recessed LED for status lights, which is frankly a deceptively awesome design. See, that hidden LED means that you don't get this weird wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning noticing some device on the other side of the room that has an LED that faces outward and is now searing your retinas, and now you can't go back to sleep. Each tower features dual one gigabit ethernet ports and on your main router at least, one of them would go off to your modem while the other one could be used to drive a desktop or a printer or uh, you could use it to hardwire a, an ethernet backhaul to the other mesh endpoints, which is a fantastic feature. Overall, it's a fanless, unobtrusive, fairly subtle design that encourages you to leave the system out, which is exactly what you want to maximize Wi-Fi coverage and speed. Speaking of coverage, the entire system comes in a three-piece kit designed to cover up to 5,500 square feet, I think but I'm not 100% sure, 5,500 square feet and connect up to 100 wireless devices. Now, feature-wise, setup and management is done via a smartphone app available on both iOS and Android, which is pretty common for most mesh systems. Now, setup is super easy. Start with the smartphone application itself and follow the on-screen dialogue. And when prompted, you plug in the ethernet and the power for the main router, and then eventually plug in the power for the additional satellite endpoints when requested. After you finish the setup, you can do things like set up a guest network or share your Wi-Fi password with a really neat shake to share feature. You can blacklist devices to permanently ban them from ever using your wireless, which is great for things like sketchy IoT devices. I mean, or you could just throw it away, you know, whatever. There's an easy firmware update button and you even get advanced features like IPv6 support, VLAN tagging, address reservation, port forwarding, and my own personal favorite, the ability to configure the entire system for AP or access point mode that doesn't disable the mesh, which means no more irritating double nap. Now, gone, unfortunately, is the Trend Micro Home Protect Suite that was available on the Deco M9 Plus. But I mean, Hey, it's a budget system. You got to make some cuts someplace, right? However, in its place is a similar but more simplified version of that called Home Care, which still features parental controls that allow you to create age profiles that automatically block categories of content for specific devices that you choose. These categories can then be further customized by adding additional sites to block or removing categories if the category is too restrictive. You can set up time limits, which control how much online time a profile and device gets. You can also configure a bedtime, which automatically shuts off the internet after bedtime has started and keeps it off for those devices until morning time. And again, both the bedtime and wake up time is entirely customizable. There's a monthly report that shows you which websites uh, were most visited and how much traffic each device used, which is great for people who have bandwidth caps, for example. And you even have QoS or quality of service to help prioritize traffic to specific devices to minimize things like buffering happening while you're watching movies. Which brings us to performance. Now previously when we would test wireless systems, we would simply run the tests, interpret those results, and then make a recommendation in our video reviews. However, many people have expressed interest in seeing what tests we are running and what data we are getting. So this year we're going to show you exactly what we are doing, which means first I have to describe 
my setup. Now I have a two story home that's about 2,700 square feet. On the first floor is where my main router is that has an ethernet drop that runs all the way down to the basement, which connects to the modem. In the basement, I have a secondary mesh point, which communicates to the main router via a wireless backhaul. And on the second floor, I have the second mesh point, which also communicates wirelessly via that wireless backhaul to the main router. The numbers that I get may not match exactly what you get in your home. Wireless coverage and speeds, all of that is entirely dependent on the construction materials of your home. So don't expect exactly these numbers, but it should give you at least a comparison point. On to the testing. The first is a file copy test where I copy a one gigabyte file wirelessly over to a local shared drive that I have here on my network. So I'm gonna test this within several different locations, including from within line of sight of the main router itself, which is the best possible scenario for the top speeds that you will get for this system. I will test out of line of sight of the main router, and then I will go up to the mesh points and test both in line of sight and out of line of sight for the mesh points. Out of line of sight and on the mesh point should be the worst case scenario for speeds. Next up, I'm going to measure bandwidth using an open source cross-platform tool called iPerf. And I will follow basically the same testing protocol as with the file copy. I'll move to several different locations, both in line of sight and out of line of sight of both the mesh endpoints and the main router itself. And finally, the concurrent streaming test. Now, in short, what this means is I'm gonna pull down 1080p streams one at a time on different devices until one of them starts buffering and can't make that reliable stream anymore. Now, all of these tests will be rerun a minimum of 10 times, and then we'll take those numbers and average them all out and give you a final score either on time or by total bandwidth capacity. All right, for the results on the one gigabyte file copy test, connected to the main router with direct line of sight to it, we got an average time of 30.848 seconds. Without line of sight connected to the main router, that time jumped up to 53.618 seconds and connected to the mesh nodes with direct line of sight, that time jumped again up to just over a minute, 60.483 seconds and the worst possible case scenario Connected to a mesh node with no line of sight whatsoever, that time jumped up to just over a minute, 67.294 seconds. In other words, you're over twice as fast if you're connected directly to the main router and within line of sight. And that is exactly why it's so important to minimize the hop count. And that is why my main router is on the first floor. On the iPerf test, connected to the main router within line of sight, I got a total bandwidth measurement of 294.5 megabits per second. On the main router with no line of sight, that, that speed fell to 223.7 megabits per second. Connected to the mesh router with line of sight, that speed fell again less than half to 83.96 megabits per second. And again, the worst possible case scenario test. Connected to the mesh point with no line of sight, had a speed just under that 82.98 megabits per second. Now it's important to note that the theoretical maximum on an 802.11 AC system is somewhere around 1300 megabits per second, but for an individual client, you're basically never gonna see that. Typically what we would expect, anything above 70 to 100 megabits per second if you don't have direct line of sight, or you'll probably see above 200 megabits per second if you're directly within line of sight on the main router. Again, that's the best possible case scenario. So seeing reliable numbers above 200 is really, really promising for this system. Okay, and finally, the simultaneous 1080p streaming test. Again, on paper, this should be the easiest test. You just start a stream and then you just keep starting 1080p streams until you see buffering. Now, I got to 11 devices that were all streaming 1080p content simultaneously with no problems whatsoever. And I would have kept going, but I had no other devices that I could test with. But 11 devices streaming simultaneously is still an insane number. That means, for example, you could have a mom, a dad, four kids, and both sets of grandparents all streaming, for example, the Technically Speaking live show every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. So this thing can clearly push traffic around, which is very, very impressive but perhaps the most important consideration of all, the cost. For $180 US, you get this three-piece kit that performs phenomenally. So am I recommending this product? Unquestionably, yes. Not only has this system far exceeded my own expectations, but it's also set an incredibly high bar for other manufacturers. And I would even go as far as to say that this could be the overall best system that we have reviewed 
period. And that means it's time to do a Google Wi-Fi versus Deco M4 comparison video. So keep your eyes out for that one here in the not too distant future. But that's gonna do it for me for today's video. Thank you so much for stopping by to check out this video. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave some comments down below, like, share, subscribe, all that nonsense. And uh, hey, when you pick up one of these systems, don't forget to invite everyone over to watch the Technically Speaking Live show. I was, I was deadly serious when I said you should do that. You should totally do that. And we'll see you all next time.